Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced React WooCommerce Theme Development with REST API. In the previous video, we learned about how to use these endpoints. And in this video, we're going to put them in action and we are going to basically uh, build the cart uh, page and we're going to implement the functionality of updating the cart items and also deleting the cart items. So let's begin. Let me show you. Okay, I'm going to uncomment that. Clear cart. Clear cart is also here, which is great. Clear cart. Okay, great. Okay, let's start from here. So you've got your cart items container, which is this one, cart wrap cart, content wrap cart. If you do an inspect element, you'll see that there. Okay, that's the one. Then you have the uh, all the items of the cart, if the cart exists. So these are your items, one, two, right? This is cart items, that's where that's coming from. That's the items, okay? And over here, that's your cart item wrap. You have the image. So that's your figure, that's your image. That's the image coming from the product, okay? And by the way, all of that data is actually available uh, inside of the local storage as well. So if you go over here, you can see you've got next cart, you've got cart, uh, cart items, you've got the cart key, the currency, and uh, you know the, all of the information from here. You've got the total price and total quantity. So total quantity is being used here and total price 36 is being used here. And the currency is actually coming from here because you want to keep that dynamic. It's coming from the backend. Okay, so it's using that currency and it's being displayed over here. Okay, so that's your title. So item.data.name, so data.name. So that's your name coming from this fashion bag. Okay, and then the description. So the description is coming from the description itself which is this one right here so you can see that part there okay and then you've got the footer so footer has got this um, has got this price okay so item dot line subtotal so line subtotal this one right here okay and then uh you've got the loading so you do need this card spinner also so let's just get that spinner quickly so i'm going to copy that spinner go to my public directory and then paste it there Okay, you'll get this from the um, GitHub. Okay, so that's your spinner. Then inside of this, you have your input element, which is basically the increment and the decrement button, which is this one. Okay, so when you click on plus or minus, what, what's going to happen is going to use this handle quantity change. And this handle quantity change is going to get called. And inside of this, if we, if we want to ensure we are inside of the browser on the front end, is because uh, it's not getting rendered at the build time, okay? Um, and then we're going to ensure that it does not, the event doesn't get propagated. We create a variable called new quantity. We want to ensure that it's not updating a product already and it's not removing the product already. Uh, and uh, if the type is decrement and the product count, uh, product count is one, like I don't want to decrement it to zero uh, because that would mean that this product needs to be removed from the car and for that we already have a button. So we're checking all of this condition and if one of these is true then we don't want to proceed further but if not, uh, if the type is increment uh, then go ahead and uh, increment the product count otherwise decrement it. Otherwise we set the value of the new quantity to the event.target.value and then we set the product count, which is this function basically. So we set the state of that new quantity over here. And once that is done, uh, we call the update card function. And this update card function, we've already discussed the job of this is basically to update the card and then get the new card request, a uh, new card request, uh, and then get all the items in the card, updated items, and then set that in the context, uh, React context store so that other cons uh, other uh, other components like such as this one this one this one all of these can consume it globally okay uh, so if you just go ahead and increment it like so you'll notice there's a loading and this changes here notice that it's getting changed everywhere so if i this is 36 this is 54 this is 3 let's see what happens this becomes 54 this becomes 72 and this becomes 4 so all of these components are consuming the global uh, you know store uh, and it's a react context using the react context api so everything that's being consumed is getting automatically updated and we don't have to worry about updating it going and 
passing things to parent and you know children and all of these things that's the beauty of the context api so as long as you update the global store using the react context api then everywhere it's being consumed will be updated automatically across the site okay uh brilliant so then you have the card total which is uh, this one and then you have the total quantity uh, that you are getting from the data that you have for the cards and then the currency also and the price okay so all of that is here then you have the clear card button uh, this function basically the job of this is in for as long as uh, the clear card is not processing already it's going to call the clear card function and the job of this is basically to just um, call this delete uh, endpoint which is this one okay and it's going to clear the entire cart as we discussed okay so this is going to use the cart endpoint add the config and again it's going to reload the you know make a new request to the view card to to get uh, the updated cart value and eventually it's going to set that in the context uh, react context so that it's available globally okay whatever the new state is excellent okay so that's what's happening there and coming back moving on And in case if there are no products available, then we just want to show that, you know, no items in the cart and then take the user to the home page so you can add uh, more products. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Let's talk about this delete button. Uh, let's go on top and we have, we go to cart item. Okay, so this is the on-click event. I think you can actually pull it on multiple lines just to be clear on what's happening. Okay, like so. So you have an on click event on this which is going to remove the product uh, on the click of this event and it's going to take the key so let's see what happens in this function this function basically is going to check a few things okay now notice that we are using uh, is mounted um, variable over here which is declared on top initialized before and the reason for using this uh, you know is mounted using the use ref is because when you are calling these functions like delete or you know update what's happening is that uh, inside of this you have this uh, asynchronous request right which has a promise and it gets completed after a certain period of time and inside of this view card you also have this set state happening like you know set processing etc okay now these all need to be unsubscribed if you don't unsubscribe unsubscribe them then you're going to get errors like you know react memory leak cannot perform a react state update on an unbounded component so i'm sure pretty i'm sure you must have got this error before that anything that's subscribed needs to be unsubscribed when the compo component leaves the dom right when it gets out of the dom so when you click this cross button this component will be removed so anything that's been subscribed like all the state changes everything needs to go away it should only happen if the component is mounted okay so that is why what we're doing is we're using use effect and this is going to get called when the component gets rendered initially so when it gets rendered we set the value to true initially it's false and when it's uh, so return function this callback function is going to be called when the component leaves the dom which is when it's unmounted when it's unmounted this is will be set to, to false and here uh, we always checking that if it's mounted or not if it's not mounted then return don't call this function because when this function is called it's going to you know do some set state inside of the view card like so right and then you're going to get that error so to avoid that we only want to call this clear to card function where the state change is happening if and only if we're only going to call this delete card item function if and only if the uh, component is mounted if it's not mounted if it's left the dom then we don't want to call it okay and uh, and also if already updating the product then i don't want to delete it because it's in the process of doing something and i want, don't want to break that in between so if it's updating the product let it update and only then i want to go ahead and proceed with the delete card item okay so so that's what's happening over here i hope this is clear to you if not you can go over this video again and also look at the code and see what's happening there all right so I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. So now if you click on this, you can see that product has been removed. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and you, you can clear, click on clear cart. You can see the entire item is cleared, which is great. Okay, so I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. 
and please follow me on github my github handle is imran h sayed please do star my repository to support my work like all these beautiful people have and do follow me on twitter my twitter handle is kuritech so i'm going to see you in the next video thank you very much bye bye